back to another episode. Today, we're gonna do the exhaust, finally. I picked up a three inch exhaust for this car a while back when I was having a lot of issues with the car and I thought it was the exhaust. Now, my exhaust is completely off, like I mentioned in the previous video, so. I picked this up a while ago. It's a three inch, no name exhaust, HKS style muffler. Um, I also got this DC sports header and that's going on today too because everything's literally on the ground. So got the car all ready, took off the side skirts, took off the front bumper. It's a dirty mess, I haven't cleaned the engine bay since the drift day. Cleaned the car once, but that's about it. But here's what I'm talking about when I say the exhaust is literally on the ground. It is on the ground. So I can't really drive this, which is why we have to do it today because I really miss driving this car. The car's gonna be stupid loud. I mean, the car's like stupid loud as it is right now with the exhaust completely off, but it's gonna be stupid loud with this. I'll give you guys a sound clip right now with the exhaust off. Nice V8, bro. Did you go with the uh, LS or the, the 5.0 swap? everyone we uh, LS swapped it with aggressive cams this is an exhaust video this was actually not an exhaust video this was a surprise and we, we actually LS swapped the 240 with aggressive cams yeah basically yeah but it's safe to say, it's stupid loud. So, Jerry, what are you doing? Gotta take off the strut bar so that I can get to the header. And I gotta take off all the AIV shit. Probably gotta go to the store and get a, a nubbin for that. I didn't think this through. I just kinda dove into so it. So, what could potentially be a two hour job is probably gonna be an all day job. Yeah, basically. I think I asked you earlier, but did you PB blaster any of the exhaust bolts? Nope. Nope, okay. And we're just going to take off one strut bar side? Yeah. Alright, doing things the uh, lazy way stuff, good. come off. Another pro tip, magnets are your friend. So whenever you're pulling off stuff from your car, have a dish. And if you have stuff that's already in the dish, you put it on another magnet right here. Talks about using magnets. Doesn't use magnets here. You don't see where I'm looking at. Got to get the heat shield off. Got to take the EGR pipe off, and then the header. Disconnect your O2 sensor. Sensing O2. What the fuck? What's that? This is the IAV. Basically, it takes exhaust gases from your cat and recirculates it into the intake. Um, when you're warming up your car, but it's completely useless. It's a, a fucking smog thing and in California, not California uh, You basically want to delete all that stuff But it helps you warm up your car. That's useless. It doesn't do anything, but it helps you warm up your car it doesn't do anything. Are you saying that you're smarter than the Japanese engineers who went to years of schooling to, de to develop a car? Yes, because and you on, think you can just remove these uh, arbitrarily <laughs> remove these important crafted pieces just so you could be a little lighter and have a little more room so you can drift with your drift friends because in 95 the japanese realized that it's useless too and they started taking it off the motors which is why s14s don't have this someone fact check him alternative yeah. facts i know everybody's gonna be in the comments like that's not what iv does they don't these have these on s14s since it's the whole conversion, it's actually a Skyline hood. Look at that. Skyline. Skynet. Roadhouse. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the IAV setup, basically it comes from this box and it connects to this metal pipe right here that connects to the header. And as you can see, I can move that. That's free. Well, that's his exhaust. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Troll all along. 
Oh, that's okay. Loose. All right. Well, <laughs> I guess your bolts are fairly loose then. No wonder I had exhaust leak. No wonder I was crying when I was driving. Oh, can we take this out of the way? Are you going to check engine light when you don't have that shit attached? No. Really? No. Oh, I thought check engine lights were always associated with uh, emissions. emission stuff, and this is like clearly emission stuff. It is, but surprisingly you don't. Because, like I said, it doesn't do anything. It literally pulls the exhaust, exhaust gas from that to this, and if this is plugged, and that's plugged, then it's not going to know But there's no, you know? I mean, I could be completely wrong, but... We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find Actually, out. we won't know because who knows what the check engine light will throw? Would it be because your header looks like that now and you have no cat? Or is it because you disconnected this? The world may never know. The world may never I mean, know. You could know pulled codes, but fuck, fuck that. Yay, it's out. Woo. So, Jer thinks that the uh, Japanese engineers over at Nissan wasted their time developing that. It's all, it's all a scam. They just needed a job. They needed to employ people in the 90s because they had the big. They had the big Japanese bubble that everything was great, great Japanese supercars, so they overhired engineers and were like, well, figure out something for the 240. And they developed that. That's my theory. That's basically what happened. Why are they so loose? Yeah, so... I've never had exhaust bolts this, this loose is, Yeah, this, this is not how exhausts come out, guys. <coughs> exhaust bolts are probably the worst bolts you will deal with in your life. The studs will come out, you'll strip yeah. them. And these are pretty loose... Is that how that's supposed to be? Oh shit. Uh, no, no, that's broken. Of... Oh, it like snapped? Yeah, that snapped. No, that's probably why I have it. Oh, yeah, that's 100%. Look at that. That's why it was easy. That, my friends, the focus is, is a snap exhaust stud that I was just talking about. See the thread on the other side? Yeah, it's supposed to be longer and have threads. <laughs> that's not great. But, you know, you got what, eight? Eight of these, so seven out of eight's not bad. Still passing grade. <laughs> what is that, a B? It's a B, solid B. Solid B. I fucks with that. Might even be a low A. Yeah. But back to what I was saying, exhaust bolts are probably the worst ones you will ever deal with because they go through multiple heat cycles on the regular. They expand and contract due to the heat. Yeah. They're, they always seem to rust. But that's probably why. My car was so loud, I heard. Okay, so under my console, we've decided to take off the hood in order to probably fit a jack handle on top of the wrench so we can get a lever arm going and get more force applied to that instead of just struggling with that short little handle from the wrench. So it was a great idea, but it's too, too big and too small. And look at how that asshole parked. Um, Fucking fuck. Like, Both of them. Both people. Yeah, fuck fucking that EP fuck. Civic and fuck this charge. So I went over to Napa real quick, picked up a 24 millimeter wrench. Um, it cost 49 cents, so... Because <laughs> you return stuff. <laughs> You're not going to mention that everyone's going to mob to Napa for cheap tools now. Exactly. So a combination of ideas worked. Fulcrum arm, uh, vice grips, and penetrating oil. And it looks like we were thinly able to break it loose, so Jer. You want to zoom in right there? Power of, of vlog magic. Unless we were mistaken again, and that's really no, just... No, I can see it. No. All right, success. More or less. More or less. It's the only reason car projects take so long, and easy car, newer bullshit. cars are easy to work on, is this is kind of bullshit. The struggle we're having with this is basically the struggle you'll have with all your header bolts, which is why Anthony was very skeptic about doing this. Yeah, which is why I was saying this is not going to be easy. Shout out to the, uh, who makes that? Did you get a Milwaukee this? one? Yeah, yeah that, Milwaukee. that thing's been through a lot. That it has been through a lot. It hasn't, like, broken. And it's great because you can tighten it once it's already gripping something. Because I like the fucking monkey wrench. Yeah. Goddamn useless. Exactly. Fuck those monkey wrenches. I've never had it where you can tighten it after. We well, finally yeah. got it off. It's pretty fucked at the back, it's, but the rest of it's... Yeah, so we'll probably have to screw that back on when time comes. But we got a wire brush, so we'll scrape it clean. But that is That's ridiculous. wrong. That's, That's not supposed to be like that, guys. Just so you know, this is all supposed to be attached as one long header. It's not supposed to be two pieces like that. Yeah, that... That's fucked. This is why his car was so loud. He was essentially running an open downpipe the whole time. That is broken, friends. Yeah, that's pretty fucked. This is why my car was always so loud from the day I bought it. I thought it was like a little exhaust leak. It's actually multiple exhaust leaks. It's actually leaking right 
before the cat, which is why you which were dying. Which is why, yeah. Which is why, like, it smelled so bad because it's basically not flowing through anything. And there's that stud. Yeah, that's... The car should have more power now, too. Because yeah. there was nothing flowing. It was basically... Uh, it was just all, like, leaking out. Yeah, was, everything was what just leaking. Doing? Wait, we got it out, guys. I'm I'm pretty happy right now. I feel like this is blurry. So just chuck this into this Corolla? No, no, no. Chuck it into that fucking asshole yeah, thing. Yeah, actually, yeah. The only thing holding on my exhaust from falling out from under the car <coughs> is this pipe to the IAV. That's the only thing that's literally holding the header on. Or I guess the exhaust. It's... Go with it. <sighs> Alright, let's see the scrape marks on the bottom. Yeah! Yeah, like the cap's still good. Great. Alright, that's solid 50 bucks. Yeah. Lightly used, like I said, guys. Just a couple scrapes. Yeah, the, the important part's still there. Yeah, it'll work fine on your car. So look at all these crap plastic welds that were all bound to the. What is? What yeah. is that? Was it leaky in there? Apparently, I don't know. That's like exhaust vent right there. <laughs> it's not even a gasket. It's a good thing we're doing this. Yeah. This is like one of those long overdue, should have done it when you bought the car sort of things. Mine was mine was weird. It wasn't. It wasn't on. It was only for one side. Admit. So I took out the old exhaust gasket, which actually isn't too bad. Here's the new one, looks exactly the same. All you have to do is press in these little things, I just push it on the ground like this. So, just to get them in, knock them out with that extension. Got it bolted up to the header, Put it, put, reused the same gasket um, on the cat that I had before, and then I have new 3 inch exhaust gaskets right here. So those I just need to tighten once I get that into the bushing. So I found that it's easier to put the new bushings on with the exhaust off the car because trying to get these on was a bitch. I had to use a little bit of PB Blaster just to lube it up, but it's a lot easier. So this just gets bolted back up to the bracket and then this just slides on once I put it up. Just got to put the last gasket in, bolt this up, and then attach it to the new bushings. Alright, got that on. Double teamed it with your hangers are a bitch. Get the rubber, do the metal, that little nub, the little penis head right there that needs to penetrate the rubber vagina. It's kind of hard, but that's how it doesn't back out. Pull up game is not strong once you get that in. And now it looks like we just gotta put the gasket, bolt that up, fire up, here the exhaust leaks, and should be good. Fires or anything yet? And it's idling. Really yeah. Once it goes down, like we'll check it. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's good. Jerry, you want to update everyone on the uh, situation that we got going on here? So basically, as you guys saw, it was idling super crappy. I'd say and we spent about an hour trying to figure it out. Yeah, I also had a couple exhaust leaks which I fixed on the bottom side. I just had to retighten the bolts on the cat where it connects to the three inch exhaust. Um, but basically... We fucked like, with the distributor Yeah, we fucked everything. with the distributor, it was going around like everything. So we really thought it was O2 sensor causing a problem, but then... We started going around the car and I started looking at like the back lines that were like that we swapped so like this one is that it goes to the AIV and I thought maybe that's the problem so I disconnected it it kind of like made it a lot worse but then I plugged it back in and it's still not helping so then I kind of just looked around and we saw this coming from the brake booster this line is completely split and then when we put, when you put when his I, finger yeah. to it it completely made the car idle fire yeah so, so it wasn't completely ripped like this I had it 
like that, and I just put my finger to it, and it made the car idle perfect. Yeah. So complete curveball, wild wild card there. Wasn't anything we touched today. It just happened to be fucking broken. Yeah. So now Jer's gonna Jer just rip it off of it on Apple just in case they close soon. I don't know if Jer ever mentioned you any of his other videos, but we live two blocks from Napa. He can run there in 30 seconds. Well, 25 because he's black. Bye, Jer. Ten seconds because yeah. Napa's closed. So I don't know what we're gonna do. But you think AutoZone will have it? Hoses? Yeah. Because that really can't go. Isn't that how it goes? You're working on one thing, and something else breaks while you're also doing that. Seems like the story of my life at this point. <laughs> So exactly. Like, no, they're just bunch of bugs. <laughs> Check out right. All right, so AutoZone coming in clutch. Was able to get my broken hose and get this nice long non-broken one. They were not. They didn't have the exact size. They didn't have the exact size, but we got two just in case. And it's always good to have like extra lines for various projects. I also got these nubbins to close my intake, and this is surprisingly four ninety nine. They had single nubbins for $4.99. So this is a variety pack for $4.99. Where the fuck would you... Driveway. <laughs> yeah, you're fucked. You're, you need an angle. No, no. Alright, so new hose is on there. Nice and snug. Also got the nubbin on there. So it should be lit. Here's the moment of truth. On the dot, a thousand. Oh, it helps. Look, it's our friend Rob, the tire guy. Hello, Rob, and his twin turbo 300ZX. Hi Rob. This is for the vlog. The stock idle for 240 is supposed to be like. Okay, well we're at 1500 now. 1100. Thousand. That's how low that Okay, well thousand it is. And that's how you send idle. Just adjust the distributor. Tightening the bolts back. All right, so I think I'm just gonna close out the video here. Um, it's starting to get dark. I just gotta put the GTR bumper back on and the side skirts, but basically the exhaust is on and we got all the problems fixed. The car idles good. We readjusted the distributor. So everything's Gucci now. Um, but until next time. Uh, <laughs>